Well, how impressed were you, Brian, with them this evening? I, I was very impressed, Tommy. They were um, they were on top all through. They started the game at a brisk pace. They disrupted the Norman style of Leipzig. They pressed them high up the pitch, as Leipzig liked to do with the opposition. They didn't let them get going, and they controlled possession in the middle of the field. I thought Marquinhos, Pardes, Pardes, Herrera did a very good job. Great balance with those three. Um, good footballers, but Herrera, as, as Keith said in commentary, gets around. He's like a dog after a bone for 90 minutes chasing. They were comfortable at the back. Um, I thought the two centre halves played very well. The goalkeeper wasn't troubled until late in the game, and then the front three, as I said at half time, they were deadly. And they can, I mean, they could have had seven, eight, mm. nine, and ten mm. goals nearly. The number of chances they created. So it was a really good team performance by them. The second goal was crucial just before before half time to kind of kill the morale of Leipzig a bit. And then the third goal came when Leipzig were having a good spell. And that was, that was the end of it. They, they, they coasted through, I felt, after that in the second half. It just didn't happen for Leipzig tonight, did it? But it didn't tonight... happen because they weren't allowed to let, let, let it happen. Yeah, when you look at those pictures, Niall, before the game, I think you know we'd quotes from Marquinhos saying, we're a we're change team now, we're, we've got team spirit togetherness and we fight for each other. We were sceptical about that, let's be honest, now, certainly before the game, but did they show that that was the case this evening? Yeah, we were sceptical because it's amazing what two or three minutes in another match did for this team in this mm. competition. And they've took to it, they've taken their chance and they've seized it and they, they don't need to be asked a second time now, they're right on it. And when you see that man there, Neymar, playing the type of team play that he showed tonight, you know they're in a better place. You see they're good to see the, the spirit and the morale of the camp as they uh, celebrate getting to... Uh, a Champions League final, they're, they're breaking a kind of a bit of a hoodoo that's been around the club and they'll be feeling really good about themselves and, and they're, they're, they're at another level, I mean they were a class apart in this game tonight but I think their attitude is somewhere that I suppose we've never seen mm. in the last few years. We know they've got all this talent, they're, they're laden with brilliant uh, players and um, I have to say that one there, that man there, Di Maria, I thought he was the star of the show tonight, I thought he uh, really stepped up. His work rate, as we know, is always great, but I think his distribution and uh, the type of balls he put in time and time again, as Brian says, they could have scored a, a cricket score. Um, Neymar, how he hasn't got a hat-trick, he's probably uh, wondering, but, you know, for, for what they were setting out to achieve, they've done it brilliantly. Mm. Um, why do you think it's taken so long for it to click in that way, Brian? You know, why, why do you think it didn't occur to them before that, that they needed to work harder and not be the sort of... Flash Harrys that they were in, in previous well, years. They got beaten last year by Manchester United, where they probably thought they had the, the, the game won, having won the away leg at Old Trafford 2 0. And they, they may have felt overconfident, but I think the coach as well has been learning as he, as he goes along. Tuchel is still there. The selection of the team tonight, you know, there was three flash boys up front, but they're all working very hard. I, I, I've not seen Neymar walk like that before, chase down the goalkeeper. That's the, it's one of the hardest tasks in the game. He would have done it for years at various teams, play as a lone striker, and while you're at it, mm -hmm. catch it, hold it, and bring the rest of them into the game. But would you mind chasing the goalkeeper every time? Hard old task, and then the keeper plays it by you, and you feel like a gilly. You don't fancy doing it next time. He did it every time, but the rest of them joined in. So it was discipline, organisation about that, about you're not going your own. If you chase the goalkeeper, we're going to back you up. Di Maria and Mbappe, and Neymar, three of the, the great players of world football, doing the donkey walk of chasing down and pressing. And then you've got the, the scrappers and the hard walkers in the middle of the field just backing her up. Mm. And uh, Thiago Silva and Pepe, I thought, were excellent at the back. But why is it just clicked? It only just clicked in the last few minutes against Atalanta, Tommy. Did. Lots of <laughs> possession. Well, they'll say they cut through the Dortmund, uh, the, the two legs against Dortmund, which they had flagged up, but that was going to be a really tough tie for them to come back in the second leg in Paris. Uh, yeah, but, but it wasn't... Uh, yeah, there was no crowd at the match and, and they managed to get over that. And they did the job and they won 2 nothing. They got two goals in the first half and did the, did the work in the second half. And that was a big step. But I think... To, to, to get two very late goals against Atalanta is obviously on morale, giving them a huge bonus, making the semi-final, 
what, 95 was the last mm. time. And now they've made it to the final. I, I think there's also, as much as there's joy there, there's relief because I'm sure yeah. they've all been under pressure and taken a lot of criticism over the last few years for not getting over the hurdle of the, yeah. the hurdle of the last 16, the hurdle of the quarterfinals. Now they've done it. I, I like um, Keith's line in commentary that's because the night the nightclubs have been in lockdown, have been closed, <laughs> so Neymar has had to kind of knuckle down a bit. But yeah, the, the, the lads in commentary did say, Keith said it was a different type of Neymar, a new Neymar. Um, and, and as Brian says, does, you know, is that the bottom line? If the, I mean, We saw it with Barcelona, we talked about it a lot last week. If the flair players aren't doing the work in the game nowadays, you're not going to win. And has that been what the, yeah, the, yeah. the change is? It, it appears to me that, that Neymar's almost seizing the moment to shine again and be, be a great player that we all thought he was going to be a few years ago. Uh, there's leadership about him. He's leading from the front and uh, setting the, the press away, as, as Brian says, and others joining in around him. Um, how many times have we seen him walking back, hands on hips, waiting for things to happen? And, and you point back to, say, the Barcelona, that you know that, that's probably what Messi and Suarez were doing more than anyone the other night. So there's a, there's a difference straight away. And when you see that click happening throughout a team, they're all seizing the moment. They all think this is our time. Our time has come. And they'll be feeling really good about themselves. I mean, we, we saw that, that, you know, you win a game like that. You know what? It was over 10 minutes into the mm. second half. It was probably over three minutes before half time when they got the second. And, uh, you know, they could have easily just walked off the pitch, shook hands with their opponents, said, OK, we'll get ready for a final. But there's more, there's something else there that, that you can see that joy that they have. They've overcome a big hurdle. Uh, within the, the team's makeup, and they just look as if they want to seize the moment as a result, and uh, they're very dangerous. They, they were 